Tonight we plan to use the uh, Raptor on the Atlas EQG mount to image M42. So uh, I'm going to carry this outside. It's still light outside, so we still have time, but look how small and um, lightweight this is. This is with a counterweight already, and I can just grab the whole thing without breaking anything, hopefully, and then see, look, it's super easy. So it's super light and portable. Tonight is Raptor night. We have this scope for about two months, so we'll try to make the best out of it. It is actually perfect to have it in winter because there are so many large nebulae out there, which will fit nice in the Raptor. As a reminder, it is a 61mm aperture telescope with a focal length of 275mm and a focal ratio of f4.5. That's fast. We screwed in the Triad Ultra inside of the field flattener. Tonight we'll be using the ASI Air with our iPad to image our target. So it is 5 p.m. now, so it's already dark outside, dark and cold, so we're about to go there. Um, but before that, Dahlia, um, how was your first experience with Orion in general? So my first experience with Orion, uh, growing up in Las Vegas, honestly I didn't really go anywhere a lot early in my life. Um, and anytime I looked outside, all I saw was like the only stars I could see. And the only constellation that I knew off my mind was Orion, besides the Big Dipper. Um, and every time I would come back home working from Abercrombie, where I met you, I would come back late. <laughs> I would come back late and I would look into the sky and be like, what a beautiful night, even though I couldn't see a lot of stars. But I did manage to catch Orion and always saw his famous belt and, of course, the little part that made his sword, which to me kind of looks like a wee-wee. Mm. But that's... Here we go again. <laughs> For her, everything looks like a wee-wee. Look, look. So the reason why I asked is because uh, it's funny because me when I grew up, uh, I grew up in a farm and there was many stars compared to Vegas here. So I never really cared about Orion that much. I never really understood why Orion was so famous. Uh, so beloved. Uh, so beloved. Because when I grew up, there was many, many stars out there, not just Orion. So the, there was no... Like Orion for me did not pop out more than anything else. But now I understand. Now living here, yeah, it's I understand. like that's so, all that you can see. All right, so now let's go capture the most uh, popular nebula in Orion, uh, which is the Orion Nebula. Let's go. Can we kiss? So, what makes Orion one of the most recognizable constellations in the night sky for people who live in the city is because there are bright stars within it. And some of them are recognizable, probably ones you've already heard before, like Beetlejuice, which is not spelled like the Tim Burton movie, but sounds really cool, and Ride. And there are also some bright stars, uh, like in the sword, which are... I forget what the name is. The one next that. to the horse head is very famous because it's really difficult to image. It's always an, a very hard star to get right in processing, which is Anitak. So tonight we won't see any attack. We're going to go to Ryan, uh, the Ryan Nebula. So it's very close to to the horse head, so we won't see any attack. But if you guys uh, try to image uh, the horse head nebula, it's much better if you have better filters, like three nanometer filters, that make a huge improvement on any attack, which is a huge pain because it gives you a huge halo, a halo around it. There is nothing like seeing Orion rise behind the palm trees. Always nice. And now, we're ready to capture some photons. So the Raptor 61 has a focal lens of 235mm, uh, which is uh, very wide, so we can capture a bunch of gas all around the nebula itself. Now the issue here is that uh, there is so much light pollution here on Volvo 9 and uh, the moon is up 
Okay, so half moon, so it's pretty bad. So now we're gonna slew through the app to Orion, and we're gonna first locate a very bright star. Rigel. Uh, Rigel's right there, so we're gonna go ahead and pick that one and slew right towards it. <sighs> it's so tiny, like it's crazy how tiny this telescope is. It's just... Here is a button of mask, so we can use that to focus the eyes. Oh, that's different. Let's show them the screen. So it's a bit out of focus because you can see the, the central spike is not perfectly in the middle. I think we should turn off this light that I would just think. <laughs> oh, yeah. solving with this light it might be hard. So here's the first light, uh, 10 seconds, and nice, like look at this field of view, it's perfect. So much uh, going on, I mean, um, the nebula is here, but I'm sure there's so much gas all around in long exposures. So I'm going to launch it like this all night. So you know what's cool? Being able to display Sky Safari on the TV, so you can really plan, sit down and plan your night. So tonight, this is the goal. Magnificent. All right, so um, we have a GoPro in our hand, which we, wait. Okay. We have a GoPro in our hand, which we never use. And um, so tonight, I think we're going to try to use this GoPro with the time-lapse feature and see if it looks nice. I don't expect much from it, but. Who knows, but we're gonna try knows. it out. So we're just going to launch a time-lapse and just put the camera somewhere by the scope and see. Can I put this? I don't have any. I don't have a tripod for it. Which is annoying. Um, bum, 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 bum. Thing. Sorry, we're going to need to procure your <laughs> scratchy post. I hope it's. I hope you can see the telescope. Can we? I think so. Nice starting. Just gonna have to do. All right, Jill Bear, watch out, cause she's gonna jump away and she's gonna toss everything. Wow, you guys, things are going well. Take a look. Take a look. Looking nice. I mean, it's starting to form. It's starting to look like the classic Orion Nebula <laughs> that we know. And you can see oh, here, this is all of the red stuff, which is the HA. You can't really see the blue stuff until you process it more. So what's amazing about imaging from home is that you can just go out. Um, right now we are we're imaging, but we just went to pick up some food, and uh, it feels really nice. Um, if we, if you've been following us for a long time, you know that we've had a house for probably a year now, and before that, like we've we've done, you know, we've this had hobby. to go out every single time to go image. There was absolutely no way we could do it from our parking lot. I mean, we've been vandalized before, so there's no way we're just gonna leave our stuff out for the night, even just right outside of our door. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, now it feels much safer. Um, we, we have a camera in the back, so we can check if, if anything goes wrong, but um, um, it, it's just amazing, so we can... Yes, having this has definitely been one of the highlights of our year. Yeah, so we can you know eat our food while imaging, no stress, nothing. Amazing. I just can't wait to eat dinner now.
the GoPro time lapse was actually really good. We might use it more often. But look at all of those clouds. So the Meridian flip is going to occur in less than three minutes. The problem is that I think it's cloudy now. Uh, it's going to be cloudy all night, so I might just stop it right now. Oh, it sucks. I packed everything around midnight. Sadly, the clouds were almost everywhere at this point. But we did spend the full night on M42 again the day after. Alright, so in here are the files for, from the ASI Air. Um, we both saw that there were so many clouds. So fun. And so I went on Blink and um, they mostly seem okay. So I think we stopped imaging at the right time before the clouds really got over M42. Either way, we're gonna check and make sure that we hope it looks good. And also we had another night on it. So um, yesterday we also uh, imaged a full night, which was uh, completely clear so we can actually add those files to the ones from the first night and uh, stack everything and hopefully it's going to look really nice so um, we're going to process the files right now and uh, we will show you our last I mean, our final result and uh, yeah so i have a question for you guys before we finish this uh, would you prefer seeing more data using the exact same camera and filter and stuff or should we try to add our monochrome with filter wheel uh, camera to the Radiant Telescope and once again try M42 with that to compare. I'm not sure what I want to do. I don't know. That's why we're do we're asking you guys, so you decide. Yeah. Why do you have a square in your face? Oh, I don't know. Am <laughs> I on autofocus? No, it's supposed to be manual. It's a manual focus. I don't know why you have a square The government's face. watching me. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, so here is a final result. <laughs> final <laughs> result of M42 with the triad filter radian stuff <laughs> radian telescope <laughs> and um Atlas EQG. Right. <laughs> go, go!